UN resolution passed and U.S.-Israeli relations seemingly hitting a new low, we want to bring in Avi Milamid now for some analysis. He is a former Israeli intelligence official and senior official on Arab affairs. It's so good to have you, Avi, this time in person. Thank you for making the time. Thank um, you for having me. Yeah, my pleasure. So first, let's talk about this resolution. Why do you think now the U.S. decided to not vote it down? There has been a growing friction and tension between Biden administration and Netanyahu vis-a-vis -vis the whole management, sort of speaking, of mm -hmm. this war. I think that in the end of the day, when you look at the big picture, they have the same objectives, meaning ending Hamas rule in Gaza Strip and eliminating Hamas' ability to continue and to dictate uh, its uh, radical agenda. But obviously, there are some tactical differences between Netanyahu's government and Biden administration. Right. So. Do you think that, you, well, you, you were already saying that it is unlikely that it will change Israel's continued, you know, more efforts, but what can UN do now to enforce these things? Is there anything that maybe could force Israel's hand? Look, Israel is saying very clearly and very simply, there will be no stop before the Israeli hostages are back home. Mm. This is the government of the Israeli, this is the responsibility of the Israeli government. It's the responsibility of every government in the world to bring back home their own citizens. I think the international community has to internalize and understand that. I'm very skeptic about the capacity and ability of the United Nations to impose anything. Let's talk about the possible effects and what could those effects be for Israel? And uh, one particular, in particular, I'm interested in is um, the effect on the hostage negotiations, for instance. Look, we saw uh, last night immediately that Hamas was toughening its position. This is on mm. the one hand. On the other hand, there is a growing pressure on Hamas from different directions to be more, I would say, pragmatic and move uh, on, onwards with uh, the, the negotiations. Uh, at the same time, we have to take into consideration that Netanyahu uh, personally um, is, is also very much considering its own political calculation, meaning the survival of its government and his uh, political right. endurance. So I think that we have today a convoluted situation where the odds for um, a significant, significant breakthrough seems to be quite slim. Um, however, we should notice that um, the leader of, uh, or the head of the political bureau of Hamas, Ismail Haniya, is visit, visiting Iran, mm. uh, and it's very possible that the Iranians do have an interest to push forward to some sort of like a ceasefire, and, and that means, of course, that it involves some sort of like a deal regarding the hostage situation. It may be that the Iranian interest in pushing forward such a ceasefire is because the ongoing escalating skirmish between Israel and the Hezbollah mm. along the Israeli-Lebanese border. It seems like that the Hezbollah is quite concerned with the continuation of this skirmish. And the Hezbollah set an equation that to a certain extent um, uh, cornered the Hezbollah in a niche because the Hezbollah says as long as there is no ceasefire, the skirmish will continue. So the skirmish continues, the Hezbollah is losing more and more assets. Mm. It lost up until now something like around 300 of its militants, which is quite substantial for the Hezbollah. So it may be that we'll see here a process that there will be an incoming pressure from the Iranians uh, upon Hamas to move on towards some possible deal. But here we have to take into consideration also that Hamas is not one voice. There are different voices within Hamas, and particularly when we are talking about Hamas leaders located inside Gaza Strip. Mm -hmm. Yahya Senwa and, and uh, Muhammad Dev and others. You just mentioned how domestic politics is driving um, a lot of decisions from Netanyahu and also Biden's part. How much strain does that or is there now on the U.S.-Israeli relationship, especially also with Netanyahu having canceled the delegation? Look, I said that one of the things that this phase uh, reflects is moving from a um, policy to political uh, mindset. Mm on both sides, the Israeli right. side, meaning Netanyahu, and the American side, meaning Biden administration. I think that right now, as they are looking at the war, we see more and more they are looking at the war vis-a-vis -vis the uh, political lenses, not necessarily the policy lenses. Mm -hmm. Over, of, of course, there are talks about the whole issue of the day after and the two-state solution, all of those things, which, by the way, are not very much relevant, not now and not in the foreseeable future. But I think that it's, in my mind, it's important to understand that right now what we see, and the more we get closer to the elections in the states, we see more and more 
um, are looking on both sides, looking at the whole issue of the war, particularly vis-a-vis -vis, uh, through the, um, the political lenses and not necessarily through the policy mm -hmm. lenses. Got it. Well, thank you so much, Avi Milamid. Always very incredibly insightful. Thank I appreciate you. your time. Thank you for having me.